Hi guys and welcome to Rufus and Doofus. It's Chico here today and where am I? Well, I'm in Wilcox, Arizona. Little small town, really not uh, uh, loaded with places to see, but there are a few uh, interesting ones. Uh, one of them was the apple pie Annie's that I went to already, you saw that. So uh, today I'm in search of Warren Earp's grave. It's right nearby and uh, Rufus would normally be with me on something like this, but there's so many thorns on the ground that his little paws are just not uh, calloused enough to handle those. So he wanted to stay home anyway. In any case, Wilcox, Arizona, the burial site and the death place of uh, Warren Earp. Uh, I'm gonna include a link at the bottom, so you know, down there in the description so you guys can read about it. But here's a short, story about Warren Earp. He uh, he was at the location of the OK Corral, but as far as I know, and I'm not sure about this, I don't think he participated in the shootout. And then he moved away, and then he went back uh, with uh, Wyatt and uh, grouped up to search out uh, the people that killed his brother, Jesse, I believe it was. In any case, um, eventually uh, Warren left and came to Wilcox and he was a kind of a scrapper you know a bully type guy uh, never backed down from a fight or anything like that and he was in a bar one night and he got into it with a guy named Boyette and uh, the he, you know the argument got a little heated it might might have been over a woman maybe a prostitute but in any case uh, they had bad blood and they started shouting at each other and everything else and Wyatt said, or not Wyatt, but Warren said, well, let's take care of this right now. You know, let's shoot it out. Well, okay. So Boyette went home and he picked up two Colt 45s and he came back to the bar. And as soon as he saw Warren, he took a couple of shots at him. Boyette was so scared that he missed with the first two shots. And uh, uh, he took another two shots and he was still scared as hell so he kind of like missed that time too well Warren not one to back down from a fight started walking towards him talking to him and and Boyette kept telling him to stop but uh, Warren kept approaching and Boyette at very close range uh, drilled him right through the chest with a 45 right in the heart killed him instantly basically and uh, when, when Warren dropped, he had a pocket knife in his hand. So, you know, don't bring a knife to a gunfight, right? Well, that's what he did. And uh, Boyette started pleading, you know, self-defense. He was in fear of his life, and he told him to stop. But then again, Warren was not armed. So I think in the long run that Boyette did get uh, convicted, uh, but then was set free after you know the investigation and I think the investigation was was more or less conducted by Wyatt but I'm not really sure and uh, like I say they set him free and Wyatt never pursued it anymore after that so uh, unfortunately Warren met, met his death uh, I believe it was July 6th of 1900 he was about 45 years old kind of young to die, die and he died in his boots and rumor has it that everybody thought that that was going to be Warren's uh, demise was something like that. He was just too much of a wise mouth, uh, didn't back down from anything, you know, typical troublemaker. But that's where he met his death, and I am in search of his grave today. So uh, let's get going. Enough of me chatting. God, I talk too much. So let's go. Okay, here we are on the uh, road. I believe this is going to take us to the cemetery. Doesn't look too bad. Uh, some people told me it was kind of like a hiking trail. Obviously, I'm not a hiker with my legs the way they are. Uh, but I expected it to be kind of rougher because they said the four-wheelers go out there all the time. But this looks kind of residential here. I hope I'm on the right road. I think I am. We'll find out pretty soon, won't we? So... Pretty nice scenery around here. It's an appropriate day to go to the cemetery. It's kind of windy and overcast, and you know, one of those uh, one of those creepy cemetery days. I get guess. I just hope the wind isn't too bad because the GoPro doesn't handle the wind very well. So we'll see. 
Oop, here's a little dip. Can't be too bad. Residents on the right. So, let's see how far out it is. I don't imagine it's too far. We're only about a mile from town, and that's where it happened. The bar that he uh, got shot in, I don't think is still standing. It might be, but I suppose if we did enough research, we could figure it out. But I'm going to let you do that, because like I said, I'm going to put a link below to Warren Earp's uh, uh, story. It's uh, pretty good, and it's uh, very interesting. Yeah, those were the days, huh? And that's not that long ago, you know? I mean, 1900 is not really that long ago. All right, what do we have up here? What do we have up here? Well, we got a sign we can't read. <laughs> okay. No dumping. All right, that makes sense. It's funny, every time you see a sign that says no dumping, there's usually garbage up piled up around it. Oop, little washboard road there. Oh, this looks like the cemetery over here. Oh, yeah, I think we may have found it. And you can see parts of the town from it. Oh, somebody's here. I wonder who. Well, in any case, let's uh, get up there. and Yeah, this looks like it right here. All right. Let's park Pepper up here out of the way. Wow, this is an old cemetery for sure. All right, let's go check her out. Okay, guys, well, here we are at the old city cemetery. It's a pretty dilapidated looking place, but uh, definitely looks like an old cemetery. There's a lot of stones out there that are knocked over. I'm not exactly sure where the uh, Earp Monument is. But why don't we go in, take a look, and maybe stop at a few of the other grave sites that are there. Should be very interesting. So, let's do it to it. Well, I think Earp's grave is way out there uh, towards the end on the left-hand side of the screen or close to the center. Uh, but I figured I'd just take a walk around and look at some of these older grave sites. The wind was so bad here uh, that I had a kind of... Um, you know, whatever you call it, over record on the video. And uh, I did notice that her name was Mary, and uh, I think she died in 1887. Uh, she wasn't that old. People didn't live that long then. But I just thought I'd uh, take a little bit of a beaten path here and, and see what was going on. Yeah, these are some old, old graves here. Carmella to somebody died at Wilcox, October 26th, 1897. Hmm. Figures the wind's got to blow every time I want to record something. All right, let's move on and see if we can find Warren's grave. I think I know where it is. I think it's that one way back there. Kind of got a beaten path there. Looks like people kind of beelined it to that. So let's take a peek. Well, here is uh, Warren Baxter Earp's um, marker. And uh, he was born in 1855 and died in 1900. So that makes him uh, 45 years old. Pretty simple monument. It's the largest one here, probably the one that's going to last the longest. And below it, all that writing, I think are people that may have, in remembrance, mon uh, mounted this plaque here. And it's got all their names listed on it. Um, not really anybody that you would expect. They seem like people that just may have uh, donated towards this. But that's the monument. monument. Pretty interesting, right? And let me just do a quick 360. This is the view from the front of the monument. say it's a large cemetery but all the markers are kind of like pushed over and such so there we have it 360. here i am sitting on warren baxter earps monument and uh, i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to be happy and you know what 
don't bring a knife to a gunfight. I don't know if that's where that saying came from or not, but Warren had a knife in his hand, a small pocket knife when he got shot. All right, guys, be happy. Take care and bye-bye, and thanks for joining me on this trip. Bye.